Okay, so today we're going to look at embedded systems. I'll pause on this slide. There are missing vowels. See if you can work out what the words are. Yep, computer system. Well done. Okay, so specification content is quite a short one. So it's just understanding the purpose and characteristics of embedded systems and some examples of embedded systems. I'll pause here so you can quickly read this. Okay, so firstly, let's identify what makes an embedded system an embedded system. So in essence, an embedded system is a special purpose computer which is built into the device it controls. Now, what we mean by that is that it's a device that has computing power. Um, however, it doesn't have a full sort of desktop PC or a laptop or anything like that built into it. So it doesn't need to have functionality um, that is kind of referred to as a general purpose machine. It doesn't necessarily need to be able to run multiple applications, doesn't need to be able to run an operating system, games or anything like that. Um, it is simply a, has its dedicated sort of purpose. So it is a case, obviously, with that being said, there are some uh, considerations as to why we do this. Now, embedded systems are used for a number of reasons. If we think about it, first and most obvious is thinking, for example, like a washing machine. So a washing machine is an example of a device that has an embedded system. It has a basic computer system that controls the wash cycles, the timing of the um, events that happen in a washing machine and so forth. However, you can't browse the internet on it or watch any videos or anything like that, and there's no need for it to do that. If it was a case that we put a standard PC, a standard computer into a washing machine, chances are we'll find that that'll make it quite bulky. So it would add additional sort of space. Um, you might also find that equally, it's an unnecessary expense. So we don't need a screen that's capable of displaying videos. We don't need, you know, eight gigabytes of RAM. We don't need a high-end CPU. So you end up in a situation where, from a cost perspective, it's far more appropriate to use a purpose-built, dedicated computer um, and embedding that into that general machine. So it comes down to kind of the cost considerations as well as the size. And these embedded systems are generally built by the manufacturers built into the device and quite, can't quite, uh, very often be updated or have any of the data on them edited. They are essentially uh, made for purpose and that's it. There's a whole host of embedded systems. This is just an example of some embedded systems. However, there are tons and tons of them. So things like microwaves, washing machines, ovens, a digital watch, television sets, sat navs, stereo systems, manufacturing equipment. So for example, um, sort of, engineering, machining stuff, things like 3D printers and so forth as well. Now, all of these sort of devices, if you get stuck for uh, devices to think of, think about your house and look around the kitchen as a prime example, and you'll probably think of a good few. So it might be in the exam you're asked to give some examples of embedded systems. And as you can see, microwave, washing machine, oven, three nice, quick, easy examples. Now, it's worthwhile mentioning that there's a bit of a gray area with embedded systems. So when you look at things like smart TVs, smart watches and stuff like that, and generally speaking, when we're talking about these devices, these devices have multiple functionality. So if you think about smart TVs where you can stream online services, more often than not now they've got web browsers built in and they're becoming a bit more like a general purpose machine rather than necessarily um, a standalone sort of purpose built dedicated system. So try and avoid necessarily devices that say smart, okay? Just stick with the simple device in itself.